Joining us now on the Specialties Hotline, the Section 5 Class AA Baseball Champions, the Penfield Patriots, Coach Nick Marson, and the battery of Gage Zeal and Nathan Sopko. Welcome to the show, guys. Good afternoon. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Gage, uh, usually we start with a coach. I'm going to start with you because you were on the show about three weeks ago when we talked about the sectionals and the steps that your team had taken. As a freshman, you lost in the semifinals. As a sophomore, you made it to the finals and fell. No junior season. You said this year was going to be different, and it was, Jeff. Penfield outscored its opponents 13 to nothing in the, in the sectional run. Gage had 27 strikeouts and 44 batters, gave up two hits in two games. So just dominant performance. Gage, it's one thing to say it's going to be different. It's another thing to go out there and do it. How did, how locked in were you on Tuesday when uh, you guys were able to bring home that title? Um, I think this this is by far the best game of the year that I that I pitched. Um, I I walked out to the mound and I didn't have any like normally normally I take a, a energy drink before a game and my heart will be racing. I did that, but you know my heart wasn't racing. That was the most calm I felt all year out on the mound. So I don't know. It just, it felt amazing. Yep. Yep. Steve Bradley told me that you showed more emotion than normal gauge. Where did that come from? Yeah. I mean, it, it was the last game of the year and last one as a Penfield Patriot. And, uh, you know, I was just, it was an emotional game, uh, from the start. So yeah, I don't know. Steve, let me ask Nate one question. Do you, do you feel like a few days later now, that you guys fulfill the lifelong dream? Does it feel like that big or just another day where we're high school athletes? It definitely feels that big. Like winning a sectionals for baseball is like huge, something that hasn't been done in so so long. And especially to do with Gage on the mound is incredible. Such a good player. Coach Marson's a history teacher too and a big student of the game. And Nick, could you put it into perspective just kind of the climb and the culmination and, and that atmosphere, because I've been to a lot of games on that field at Penfield and never has it been like it was on Tuesday. Yeah. I mean, I'd never been a part of anything like it. Um, and I thought it was just amazing that we were able to play a sectional title game on our home field. You know, like when we had first heard that frontier wasn't going to be available and that the higher seed would host, you know, it was easy to sort of first look at that and think, Oh, you know, kind of disappointing that these guys wouldn't get a chance to play there. But I mean, anyone that was there and saw both the semifinals against McQuaid, where we were told there were 800 people. And then the finals where we heard there was more than that, maybe over a thousand. Um, I mean, that atmosphere was, was electric and it was just so loud and the student body being there and them rushing the field after the final out. Um, to me, that was, I mean, that was a, the championship atmosphere that you want. And I can't speak for all the players, but something tells me that, they wouldn't have traded that for for anything. Got guys as players. Do you think Section Five should maybe consider looking at keeping this format that it's at a high school and not at a big stadium where it doesn't feel maybe as electric? What do you think, Gage? Would that be something you should they should maybe take a look at doing, or should they go back to Frontier Field? No, I think they definitely should consider that because playing at Frontier, it's it's such a big big stadium. Um, when there's that many people, it does. Like when there's a thousand people, it doesn't look like there's that many people. But like when they're all around the field, like they were the other day, it's it's something special. Yeah, and uh, the the student section has gotten so big, like over the years, that all our friends come out to support us, and like for that to have it at the home is like so special. Because I want to ask this before it gets too late in the interview, and I know Bradley Bradley can't say it because he'll start crying. But Coach Marson, I know it's important for you the lineage of this program and the guys that came before these guys. I know that was very important to you as a coach. Can you talk about what some of those guys meant to the program or at least what they taught these guys about how to be winners? Yeah. I mean, they laid the foundation and we we're so blessed that we have underclassmen who pay attention to the seniors who, who learn from them and who recognize, you know, the example that they're setting. And, and I feel like, each year, the incoming senior class feels a sense of responsibility and obligation uh, to live up to what their predecessors left behind. So, you know, last year, of course, losing the 2020 season, there's a special place in our heart for those four seniors. And that's why we made sure uh, we've got plenty of pictures of them holding the brick. Uh, we've got a great picture of this year's team with those four seniors under the scoreboard. Uh, that title, as far as 
is is we're concerned. That title belongs to them as much as any of the 20 guys that were in uniform, uh, you know, for for this year's game. Uh, and to just be out there, it's just such a great moment. I mean, it's it's what you what you do it for. And we had players coming out that go all the way back to my first year as varsity coach and to just, you know, to see guys who are now in their early twenties who have graduated college and they're still wearing Penfield baseball gear and they just are genuinely happy for, for you and, and, and feel like a piece of that, that brick belongs to them. And it, and it absolutely does. Um, you know, it, we're a program and, uh, and it was so great to be able to celebrate it with, with alum from, you know, the last five, six years. What was it like to catch Gage and this whole pitching staff start with Gage, but, we can't get through this without giving Jack Josephson um, a little bit of love for his performance against McQuaid too, because um, he, you guys were lights out the whole whole tournament. You didn't give up a run, and you can't lose if you don't give up any runs. So, what's it like to from the best view behind the dish there? Yeah, from from the beginning of the season, I gave him a video of him throwing 96, and I was like, "Am I gonna be able to catch this kid?" And uh, first practice, I got there, my hand started hurting, and I was like, "This is gonna be a long season," but. He's just so accurate, like throughout all of it. He's so smart with all his pitch selection and his position. So, and then moving on to Jack Josephson, he's so dominant. Like when he gets in the zone, he's like perfect. Like nobody can touch him at all. And in the semifinal game against McQuaid, his pitching got better as the game moved on, as he got more locked in. So that was like definitely a big game for him. Complete game, 11 strikeouts against McQuaid. He went four and one on the season, 1.56 ERA. Nick Ionello, 4-0, 0.81 ERA. Hey, Gage, we, we, we give you a lot of love. How about the, your catcher? Well, I mean, that's you, you can't just put anybody back there. What makes that young man so good, Nathan? Uh, he's definitely the tough, kid, toughest kid I've ever met. Um, he goes in there. Huh? Hands of stone. <laughs> he goes in there every game, and and he doesn't care how hard I'm throwing. He's He's putting his body on the line. He's sacrificing everything. And, uh, I, you know, I can't thank that kid enough. He's, you know, he's my boy. Um, coach alluded to the to the atmosphere, though, but you took a deep breath. You got a one and two count, two outs in the top of the seventh. You stepped off the mound. It looked like the students were getting ready to, to rush the field. Um, and then you were able to get strike three and, you know, that chaotic scene ensued. But take us through that from, from your eyes and, and all the things you've done in baseball and that moment, you know, from when you – we're calm until you strike three and you know there's those photos of you who's as stoic as they come just letting it all loose yeah so I think uh so there was a fielder's choice before that and um so then there was two outs and then I got him just two strikes I stepped off because I saw like the student section moving so then so they wouldn't hop the fence so then they just uh ran out of the field um so I took a I took a deep breath looked at him and I was like, all right, this is what this is what's gonna happen. You know, everybody's gonna dogpile, and someone might die, but uh, you know, <laughs> um, yeah, no. So I just took a deep breath and <sighs> strike three, and then everything everything just went crazy. You know, I had to give I had to give Sabra a hug because you know that man's been through it all with me, and uh, you know, then I just flopped on the pile, and then everybody came. Um, Marcin, after after the game, I mean, the fire trucks were there before the fire, before the trophy was even presented, and then afterward, it just kind of turned into a community celebration. And you've alluded to a couple of those moments, but one moment that stuck with me was just you off to the side taking it all in, and um, just trying to process all that. And what was going through through your mind? It's almost like a wedding day. They always tell you to step aside and take a minute to take it all in. It looked like you and your wife were doing that. And, you know, what was that like for you? Yeah, I mean, it's surreal. Uh, you know, it's like you just – you can't put into words how grateful you feel to have these kids in your life. And, you know, I mean, I could have stood out there another hour watching them take pictures of that trophy. And you just you just reminded of everything you ask of them. You know, I mean, people come to the game. They get to see Gage and Nate and the boys for two hours. But they didn't see – the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours that went into that moment, practicing in a gym when it's 25 degrees out, running sprints, doing drill after drill, the expectations we put on them on the field, off the field. Um, you know, I mean, it's just so much goes into it. And I, and I think that's why, you know, you saw Gage react the way he did. I think that's why you saw the pure joy uh, on everybody's faces because 
you know, it was, it was a, a lot of work that went into that moment. And uh, so for me, yeah, it was just, it was about stepping back and, and watching each one of those, those guys have their moment holding the trophy and just being around each other and, you know, just being so thankful that I was allowed to uh, be around for the part of the ride. People ask me why I keep doing this show. Hearing you guys talk about what you did, having a night that you guys don't care what you do in baseball gauge, you'll never forget that night. Um, that's why we do the show. So you guys can share those memories and hopefully the kid listening or the coach listening will go, I want that moment. So I wish you guys all the best in the future. Nathan, what a senior year, hockey and baseball. Coach Marson, the first gauge, the first in school history. Congratulations to Penfield. Thanks for being on our show once again. Coach Marson, congratulations. Thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate Gentlemen, it. Gentlemen, take it and run, boys. Take it and run and have a great future, all right? Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Penfield Baseball, our first interview in the books for our last show of the year. You're listening to the Cosmo Ferris High School Sports Show brought to you by Salvatore's Pizza.